whether you want to grow organic or synthetic microbes should be part of your grow plan. I'll show you what to use and why they work. But first, check this out. Let's give a quick shout out to the official sponsor of the show, Real Growers Recharge. If you want bigger roots and bigger fruits, you've got to check out Recharge. It's like an instant compost tea loaded with millions of beneficial soil microbes. It's easy to use. Just mix it with water, apply once a week to your plants. It works with any nutrients and you can see the difference in 48 hours. Get stronger, healthier plants with Real Growers Recharge at realgrowers.com. Coupon code DUDE. Again, keep it real. And go to realgrowers.com. Coupon code DUDE will hook you up. All right, back to the show. All right, let's get into the microbes, man. You know, I'm always in this, I got to see it to believe it state of mind and they grow and they're saying how microbes work. Nah, you can't say it. By the way, we talk about micros, which are micronutrients, and then microbes. And microbes are like the beneficial bacteria and fungi and those things that work to solubilize nutrient or to kill uh, off pathogens. I've got a whole bunch of, of really cool uh, benefits that we'll get into. Yeah, and if you're already growing an organic medium that has compost and a mix, you probably already have some native naturally occurring microbes. If you're in an inert cocoa, uh, inert peat, you're going to want to amend. You're going to want to inoculate microbes in there. Yeah, and they do different work. Whether If you're in an organic soil, uh, they do different things than if you're in like cocoa or something somewhat inert. Uh, different microbes will thrive in those environments, but man, definitely works. One of the biggest things uh, I had a com- combat back in the day was people telling me that, oh, microbes don't work with synthetic nutrients. And yeah, we'll, we'll get into that as well. They definitely do. It just does different things. Well, the grow environment, of course, if you were in a water culture, deep water culture, um, we're not going to be sustaining a diverse microbe life no. in water culture. No. Maybe some pythium, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, it's like bare roots there, and the plants just aren't made to grow uh, on bare roots. They're make, made to have this little area, a rhizosphere, just a millimeter or two between the roots and then the soil. And that's where all those transactions happen. That's where the uh, the sugars come down from the plant, and they feed the microbes, the exudates, and... Man, it's pretty amazing, man. They do they do a lot of work. You mentioned roots. Let's talk about the first one here that you know comes in contact when you deal with mycorrhizae, which is it's like a fungi. Yeah, myco means fungus, rhizae means root. It's a fungus root. It is literally these little man, it's these tiny spores. And what happens when the right in the beginning, when the plant is just starting to grow, it will send this signal down to uh, <laughs> Ask the spore to invaginate it. And if that's the technical word, all right? And <laughs> it sends down this this uh, hyphae, this really thin hyphae, and it gets itself into that root hair. It just wiggles its way into that root hair. And uh, it ends up making like a whole maze inside there. And that increases the surface area. It increases all these nutrient absorption points in there. And the plants, <clears throat> excuse me, the plants able to access and hold so much more nutrient in that little area. I just love to see these relationships in nature where they, they kind of both need each other. They both talk to each other, take yeah. care of each other, tell them what they need. It's been going on in nature forever, right? The mycorrhizae is able to solubilize. It's able to take those hyphae and reach nutrients and water that the root hair can't reach without them. And then the root's able to make sugar. I'm sorry, the plant's able to make sugars up top Send those sugars down to feed the microbes. It's, it's neat, man. Dude, I dig when you in your regular world here, we're like, oh, fungus and bacteria, man. That's gross. Like the toenail fungus or, <laughs> you know, my neighbor said once, get it over with and make yourself stronger and go lick the gas pump. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, dude, a couple important things to know about using mycorrhizae. One is that it's it's meant to bring nutrient and to bring nutrient into the plant. So if the plant is just getting loaded with nutrient, it's not going to send that signal to make that mycorrhizae association. Uh, so just don't overload it with fertilizer or you will stifle the mycorrhizae. Uh, one really good way to get it to grow, and this is super, this is really important, this is the way to, but is to inoculate the roots super early. 
when you inoculate them early, the plant uh, hasn't been fed a whole bunch of nutrient yet. So it's still looking for nutrients. So it's sending little signals down there. Uh, so it'll make those relationships with the mycorrhizae. And then as the plant grows, it just grows. You know, as the roots grow, the myco just grows right along with it. Like your fungus, man, your fingernail <laughs> fungus. Oh, one last thing. Glomus enteratices or rhizophagus irregularis. And I don't make these names, man, that they renamed it. They renamed it. It used to be yeah. Glomus enteratices. But anyway, that's the species that you want. That's the species that will uh, form the association with cannabis. It's plant, plant specific. Yeah, I was told to get the endo, not the ecto. Endo. Yeah, and it's very plant specific. That ecto is the stuff that goes from tree to shining tree and all that. That's a cool podcast. Check that, that out. That is. But endo is, it goes, remember we're talking about making those arm bustles, making those little mazes inside? Mm -hmm. All that stuff that's happening inside the plant, man, inside the root. So endo. It's like it's a bacteria. Another word, like I was saying, I feel, oh, bacteria is bad, but beneficial bacteria, it blows my mind. These things know how to work. They've been here so much longer than we have as humans. I consider them almost like cool aliens that know what's <laughs> right. going on. That's how I learned about them in my gut. They're in the rhizosphere of our plants as well. So it is important to have that no vacancy and that bacteria working for you. Yeah, and there's more than no vacancy sign. You said we have them in our guts. We have them all over our bodies. And what do you, well, what do, you do when you cut yourself? You clean it, right? And then you try to clean it again and again. And you try to keep it, they call it sterile, right? Or put dirt in it. I've heard that from some people too. Yes, because the idea is you can either try to keep it completely sterile which nature fills a vacuum. Good luck doing that. Uh, or to put the beneficial bacteria, the things that are going to uh, stimulate healing or growth. And when you've got trillions of those or billions of those, they push out the pathogens, the bad bacteria. But is it true? I used to tell growers, uh, you know, selling many beneficials at a hydro store. This will help your nutrients be more available and maybe even lower the nutrient yes. input you're putting into your system just yes. due to how they're solubilizing it. Is that the correct word? Yeah, absolutely, man. They're holding it. They make these sticky biofilms that hold on to nutrient. And then they're also able to regulate their own pH. So they're able to make like citric acid. They're able to make carbonates and they're able to make it so you're at the right pH. Don't forget all this is happening where the root meets the soil, not over at the top two inches of your soil or wherever. That little area where the root meets the soil is all we're trying to uh, fix. That's where we're trying to facilitate these nutrient transactions. And yeah, bacteria do a great job of, they're facilitators, man. They're fixers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they make it happen. Yeah. Bonus one. This used to be controversial. Trichoderma. Some people said trichoderma is a too aggressive fungus, like it would be too dominant on other things, but it's a big decomposer, right? All right, so we're talking about the bacteria, but the, those are bacteria. Mycorrhizae is a fungus, and trichoderma is a fungus as well. But mycorrhizae is the one that's getting the uh, nutrients into the plant. Trichoderma is outside the plant. That is the one external that is kind of like the security. And it's going around. It can outcompete anything because it is uh, super aggressive. And it can just, you know, push, push a pathogen out of the way. Uh, it can solubilize nutrients. It can make enzymes to make nutrients available. Uh, I got no problem with trichoderma. <laughs> I like it. It's like insurance for the grow. I mean, you should be inoculating. There's different times you can do it. I like the once a week treat in my watering system. Sure. I'll try to get also, man. A lot of these, they eat the molasses. They love the molasses. So they'll either eat organic materials or uh, just by giving them a little bit of those sugars. It yeah, definitely, definitely helps. I dig. So don't think if you're growing in cocoa or peat or even inoculating rock wool blocks, depending on what your system uh, microbes are a huge benefit. I like to grow how nature grows to a degree. So I get made fun of for saying that. They're like, oh, really, dude? You have a light <laughs> in a closet, in a tent, in a light. But try to incorporate as much knowledge as she has as I can. Very intelligent. Yeah, I like to be inspired by nature, understand how it works. But I'm definitely doing a quite a different thing than what we're doing out in uh, um, just out in a forest, I'll say. So yeah, very cool. But these are some tricks that I learned using soil microbes. Uh, from Mother Nature into my garden, and 
Yeah, I've been loving it, man. Definitely a game changer. If you don't believe it, just go see who's fertilizing the woods. And that's all <laughs> two cents. Let us give us some comments below. Let us know if you're using some microbes up in your grow. If you got any tricks or tips on that, comment below. Yes. And if you like this video, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video with another grower you know. And check out the other couple of videos YouTube's recommending. The dude says you'll dig them.